Hi, my name is Bruce Magatio from the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. In the following video, I will speak with Martin Maronek from Carnegie Mellon University. He will talk about his presentation from the 2012 annual meeting titled, Experimental Investigations on the Coefficient of Friction and Wear of Single Granules. So what I'm studying here is uh, I'm doing some experimental investigations on the coefficient of friction and wear of single granules. And when I say single granules, I mean uh, individual spherical particles. Um, our main motivation here actually interfaces with the chemical engineering community, particularly uh, solids processing and uh, particle technology. So when we look at uh, granular flows, we see that they're very prevalent in nature and industry, um, particularly industries like pharmaceuticals, food processing. We see rigs like uh, hoppers and silos, uh, rotating drums and mixers. And so what we notice is that there are a lot of different granular flow phenomena which adversely affect these processes in terms of cost, yield, and effectiveness of the products. Some of those things being segregation, jamming, or particle attrition, where, where particles break apart into smaller particles. Um, what we see is that the, the community wants to model these processes through methods such as the discrete element method so that they can predict when these things will happen and design against them. And what we notice when we look at some of these studies is that um, very small variations in tribological parameters such as shape change due to wear or coefficient of friction can have a large effect on the global behavior that these models are trying to predict. So what we want to do is come in and do detailed studies on uh, single particles so that we can um, help create more detailed uh, single particle interaction models for these larger scale models. So the way we conduct this research is we use a granulon dish thermometer, which I show here, which simply holds a single granule by means of a holder against a disc which is going to rotate. Um, and then we actually also use a optical interferometer to get surface measurements uh, both before and after testing. So from our system what we get is two measurements. We get coefficient of friction and wear depth which is simply uh, the length of extension of uh, an LVDT device as the granule wears. And from those two outputs we can derive two other outputs which are the uh, wear volume and the uh, nominal contact area between the um, surface of the granule and the disc. Um, so we did several different studies on several different materials. Uh, one of those studies was looking at uh, varying speed. Um, and so the material we study here is a cellulose acetate material. This is a material that is commonly used in um, granular flow validation experiments. And so one of the most interesting results we see here is that when we look at coefficient of friction in particular, um, we see that over time the, the values of the three different sliding speeds approach a, a similar steady state value. But what happens is they get there at different rates. What's interesting about this is, if, if we go back to our motivation um, with the solids process community, community, is that many of the particles in these rigs aren't undergoing more sliding th than what is seen in this transient region. So this might be something important for modelers to incorporate, is that perhaps using uh, this steady state friction value may not be correct. Um, and what we see from the, uh, the surface uh, images here is that we see that we have uh, a granule uh, the granule with a roughness of about 0.5 microns, the disc, which is, which is similar, um, close to 0.5 microns. And what's interesting is with the cellulose acetate material is that it actually um, deposits a transfer film on the disc. And so what we see with the granule in each of the sliding tests is that the roughness of the granule is actually decreasing as it slides against the disc, as it's almost uh, being polished somewhat. So one of the, in addition to speed studies, we also ran a number of load studies. Uh, the one I display here is for uh, a tool steel granule. What's not surprising is that when we look at the wear, um, the higher load uh, naturally causes more wear of the granule. Um, accounting for the different amounts of wear based on load is very important for these modelers because uh, it affects the shape change of the particles, which has been shown to have um, a large effect on the results they're trying to predict. So if we look at um, the, uh, the surface shots in this instance, what we see is that we have a granule that starts out much smoother than the disc which it's sliding on. And uh, during sliding, um, the granule's uh, surface patterns actually start to look more like the disc, and the granule in turn also becomes much rougher. What I show here in the, uh, the next box is actually all the different materials that we studied here. We studied five different granule materials, uh, those being brass, cellulose acetate, glass, and a tool steel material. Um, what I'll highlight here is uh, the tungsten carbide granule. This, uh, this study was unique because this was the only study in which the, uh, the disc uh, wore as opposed to the granule. And what we saw here is that the granule initially starts out much smoother um, than the bare disc. And as the disc wears, the roughness in these uh, wear tracks 
actually become smaller and so the, uh, the tungsten carbide granule is actually uh, causing the disc to become smoother. Um, in terms of the um, uh, friction and wear plots, we see that uh, brass, which is the softest material, uh, provides the uh, highest amount of wear, which isn't surprising. One interesting thing to note is that the, uh, the tungsten carbide and the tool steel granules are showing the same wear depth. And this is not surprising because in the case of the tool steel granule, the granule wears, and so we have steel material wearing. And in the case of the tungsten carbide granule, the disc actually wears, which is also steel. So it's not surprising that these two, uh, two tests fall on top of each other. So in conclusion, what we want to show here is that a lot of complex granular flow behavior um, can be uh, explained and better, predictive, better predicted through interrogating uh, particle scale tribology. Um, we saw variations in the coefficient of friction and wear based on speed, load, and material. And uh, these variations will be important for uh, solids processing and particle technology um, researchers to uh, include in their models. What we hope to be able to do next is to take, this, um, take these studies and incorporate them into detailed single particle interaction models such that we can um, aid these modelers in producing better global scale models um, which will lead to better predictions of these uh, the issues highlighted here and better designs of the, the solids processing equipment. Um, in terms of uh, more specific future work, a couple of things we'd like to look at are obtaining some uh, temperature measurements at the interaction surface. Uh, and we'd also like to look at uh, measuring rolling friction in addition to the sliding friction that we've measured here. You can find more videos like Martin's by visiting the STLE website at www.stle.org.